to look at the different hand positions very briefly to explain to you why it is that the hands form certain things in certain ways and why. Uh, and all this is going to lead up to the very end when you're going to find out why you've been doing what you've been doing this week. So don't go away. Um, I'm going to start, though, with a very simple exercise that I think you will enjoy. It's, uh, it's one to show you the importance of arm positions in the Tai Chi postures. So if you're ready, we're going to start together by placing one hand flat, relaxed on the opposite shoulder. That's all I want you to do. Then I want you to raise your arm and bring the hand up towards your head. Now, if you can, I'd like you to raise your elbow as high as you can. So it's as though you're saluting me. Keep your fingers close to your eyebrow and lift your elbow up as high as you can. Great. Now, <laughs> I can just imagine you at home and uh, people passing by going, what, what? That's not like any Tai Chi style I know. So keep your hand in touch with your eyebrow and the other hand here on your shoulder. Can you feel your muscles in your shoulders tightening? Right now, keep your fingers where they are, keep your hand where they are, but drop the elbow. Pick it up again and drop it. Pick it up again and drop it. So hopefully you would feel a tension coming into play every time you lifted your elbow and dropped it. Every time you raised it, you dropped it. Now that is why I tell you to keep your elbows low, because if your elbows are low, if your elbows are low, your shoulders are relaxed. If your shoulders aren't relaxed, then your neck isn't relaxed and your spine goes out and everything else goes out. So it's all related and it comes back to this idea of arms. We're dealing with arms today. For all you lot who've just arrived late, we're dealing with arms and hand positions. So you've done the exercise there. You know now why it is that I say to you keep your elbows low and your shoulders. Now in Tai Chi there's not that many hand positions but I'm going to run through them for you because it's very important and it leads into what we're doing next week which I'll tell you about in a minute. First hand position is the fist in Tai Chi. Now, unlike in karate or Wing Chun, the fist is not closed. So let me show it to you. When you see the Tai Chi fist position, it, it assumes this. Can you see that? Looks like an ordinary fist, but watch. Ahoy there. There's space down there. It's very loose. And I just want to point out when we're here, note where the thumb is. It's down the side. It's not on top. And it's never tucked in. If you try and tuck your finger in, your thumb in between your fingers and you hit something, you'll just break your thumb. Always on the outside, tucked around to the side. But it's loose. It's loose. It's not tight. Why isn't it tight? Surely it should be when you hit something. Yes, that's it. It's only when you hit something. Do you remember or have you ever seen the, the picture of Bruce Lee doing his one inch punch? Like this. Well, he's utterly relaxed and all he does is pass through his body that kinetic energy that's expressed through soft limbs, soft joints, open joints and expressed in the final twist of the, fi the fist at the very end. Now, would if only I had a volunteer, I could show you what I mean. Oh, who's that? So the idea is, long way away, listen, watch. So instead of, a bit difficult to do it from here, but instead of me having to withdraw my hand to strike, I keep it very close and all I do is allow my body to relax and my hand to tense at the very last second. Something like that. Anyway, not a great example. It's all right, really. It's 
second position, the open hand position. Now, before I describe why we have the hands like this and what why they are, forget anything you've ever seen, particularly if it's a uh, Pink Panther film where you might have seen people chopping each other with an open hand. Forget all that. The open hand techniques in Tai Chi are soft and relaxed. Can you see how curved the hand is? How soft it is? All of the joints are curved. All of them are relaxed. There's no harshness. There's no tightness. There's no tension. You're not pulling back here. You're avoiding the tension of the wrist. So relax it to release it. If that's tight, the forearm tightens. If the forearm tightens, depending whether the palm is up or down, the bicep or tricep tightens, resulting in tightness of the shoulder, the back, the upper back and the whole body. So we want to avoid tension. Third posture, known as the dragon's mouth or the hook or the claw. All fingers coming together, touching, dropping down. Can you see it from the side? We do it in a move called single whip. Out here. Depending on your style, it might look more like this or it might look more like that. Single whip out to one side and the soft hand together. It's really just a grabbing movement rather than anything else. I'm going to try and do it in a fight. It looks rather silly and it probably doesn't work very well. The only other technique really I want to describe was what's called, I call anyway, the passing of the palms. And we did it in the Qigong and the breathing exercises where we did the palms passing each other. And this was to work on this idea of balance, yin yang, one active, one passive. However, when we say one is passive, it doesn't mean it isn't active in a passive sort of way, if you understand what I mean. So when we're doing golden rooster on one leg, which you did a couple of days ago, and don't tell me you didn't, because you did. When we do golden rooster on one leg, we think this is the active side, the raising of the hand and the leg. But what's the other hand doing? It's pushing down, it's holding us, it's grounding us. Without that, it would be much more difficult to stay upright. There's a relationship between the two. And in many postures, like yesterday's brush knee and push, it is the hand down here, not the hand up here, that gives us the stability and groundedness in order to complete the whole move. So that pushing down, and again, the passing of the palms, is absolutely fundamental to the arm movements of Tai Chi. So those are pretty much all I wanted to talk to you about today. Those fundamental moves to do with the upper body because yesterday we looked at the lower body. And as you can tell from now, there isn't that much to it. But what I do want to do, and I'm just gonna get a bit closer because I'm gonna sit down and tell you, is um, that Instead of next week, us going through random elements of Tai Chi, such as, oh, we could do, let's look at, let's look at the lower back for a few days, or let's look at the shoulders in Tai Chi. I'm, sus I suspect we're going to be in quarantine for at least another two weeks. So this suggests to me that we've got five days of next week, Monday to Friday, and the following Monday to Friday. So we've got about 10 sessions, I reckon. How could we use that time to build on what you've done and give you something really, really useful? Well, this is my plan. And if you're interested, you can let me know in the comments. A couple of years ago, I wrote a book called The 10 Step, or The Beginner's Guide to Tai Chi, and it was a 10 step form and that form is very simple it's made up of a series of movements that you learn one a day now instead of me trying to teach you all of those moves one a day explaining elbow 45 degrees to the right gyrate the hip slightly to 30 degrees to the left take 20 percent of your weight out of the right foot Rotate north, northwest, 
14 degrees, you might be saying, I don't really want that detail. Can't you just show it to me? Yes, I can. So that's the idea. As of next week, I'm going to once a day show you one posture from all different angles, breaking it down into its component parts, reassembling it as one move, and then the following day, adding a subsequent move. At the end of two weeks, you have your 10 movement form, what's called the short form, the very short form. Now, you are going to need to do something in order to get this because the videos themselves are only 10 minutes long and it won't be enough. So, get my seat to finish off now. Finally, you're gonna to have to follow that link in the description to this video because in that link, it takes you to the book that I wrote that gives you all the instructions for each move and the photos. The only thing it doesn't have is the live video instruction, which you're gonna get from me. Follow the link and you'll see a video of me doing the form. I do it twice, one on one side and I repeat it one on the other side. So watch the first half. If you're inspired, if you think I've got two weeks, how can I usefully use this time to learn something that will last me the rest of my life, that will re-engage me with my body and my breath and something I can go out at the end of this quarantine period and practice on the beach or in the park forever, something you can teach other people, then go get a copy of the book, the link's there. If you haven't got any money, just put zero in the box and you'll get it for free. If you've got some cash, pay for it. I don't care. Well, I do care. I would like to get some cash, but I understand now is a difficult time for everyone, which is why I'm doing all this for free. You get all the video classes and you get the book if you're in a difficult situation. And I know that a lot of you are, because I'm in it as well. Uh, anyway, the least we can do is share the skills that we've got. So go along and get it. If you get it, I'll get your name. And then when I've got your name, I will make sure that I send you all the videos that we're gonna create over the next two weeks. So you'll not only have the book with the photos and the instructions, but you'll also have all the videos to back up that work. And then in two weeks time, you'll get, you'll have completed the whole course. If you think that's a good idea, if you think it's something that you want to do, leave your name down here, go and have a look at the link, check it out, download the book, and I'll see you on Monday for the start of what I think will be a really interesting 10 sessions where you can leave comments and I will try to address those issues at the end of each session. But mostly, and this is a difference, it's going to be in silence. As of Monday, I'm going to be demonstrating from all different angles with no words. You're just going to follow me and I'm going to point and indicate how we move. All the words and the instructions are in the book. That's where you need to go and get it. Okay, that's it. That's my idea. That's the best way I think I can use my time for the next two weeks to give you something more solid that you can teach other people, that you can pass on to other people and you can practice constructively by yourself. Okay, that's it for today. Check out the video, get hold of a copy of the book, leave a comment if you have to or want to in below, think about it for the weekend, get back to me if you need to and I'll see you on Monday the same time for lesson one of the 10 step form. Have a good weekend, stay safe, stay distant, relax.